What's up guys? I'm LQ. This is the LQ Review and I'm here to give you the 25 TV shows that I'm most looking forward to in 2020. So the 25 TV shows that I'm most looking forward to in 2020. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. I put out a lot of content. want to make sure you're up to date with what I'm doing. But let's go ahead and get started with my list. Number 25. Monsters at Work, the Disney Plus series that's coming out next year, or this year, it's almost this year. Um, direct sequel to Monsters, Inc., and um, this one barely made my list. There was a couple other shows that I almost put ahead of it, but it's an interesting enough concept. I don't think there's ever been a TV series related to a uh, Pixar, pro uh, Pixar um, franchise, so... I'm at least curious about this. So number 25, Monsters at Work. Number 24 is The Walking Dead World Beyond. I didn't like Fear the Walking Dead. I, I abandoned it. I did. I abandoned Fear the Walking Dead. I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. I just couldn't get into Fear the Walking Dead. So I'm cautiously optimistic about Worlds Beyond or World Beyond. Um, it barely made my list. So... 24, Walking Dead, World Beyond. Number 23, South Park Season 24. I thought Season 23 was a nice rebound. So Season 24, hey, bring it on. More South Park. Number 22 is Stargirl. Guys, I love the DC Universe TV shows. Titans, Swamp Thing, Doom Patrol, Harley Quinn. They're all great. Hopefully Stargirl keeps that trend going. Number 21 is Survivor Season 41. We don't know what se Season 41 is going to be about yet. Probably going to be... 18, 16, 20 new contestants, but we don't really know. But uh, Survivor is always going to be high on my list. I'm such a fan. So number 21 is Survivor Season 41. Number 20 is Star Trek Discovery Season 3. I thought Season 2 was actually a step down from Season 1, but it's still Star Trek and it's Discovery, so Season 3 is my number 20. Number 19, Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. I'm not as big of a Clone Wars fan as a lot of Star Wars fans are. I liked Rebels a lot more, but new Star Wars is new Star Wars. Can't wait to check out Season 7. Hopefully we get some more um, connections to Yoda, Obi-Wan, their training, with Qui-Gon Jinn. I'd like to see some more of that get developed. Season 18, or number 18. <laughs> number 18 is The Witcher Season 2. I was a big fan of the first one, but I don't think I was as big a fan as a lot of you were, but I really, really, really liked it. And definitely looking forward to see where Geralt goes in Season 2. And, you know, count me in. I'm on board. Season 2 of The Witcher is number 18 for me. Number 17, this one is weird. But it, for some reason, it just it feels like those 80s, 90s game shows for kids. And I'm like, bring it on, please. And that's the Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge on Disney+. Plus. Um, it's a Star Wars game show. And I'm like, how come this has never been done before? This is great. Um, so I, I'm probably like the only person in the world who has this on their most anticipated list. <laughs> but here we are. So that's number 17. Um, number 16 is kind of a cheat, but it's my list, so that's what we're going to do. Number 16 is The Toys That Made Us Season 3, The Movies That Made Us Season 2. Um, I love this series. Uh, it's so nostalgic, and it's so fun, and it's so great to learn the backstory on some of these products, properties, etc. That um, I'm really looking forward to, to uh, Toys That Made Us 3, Movies That Made Us 2, and it's number 16. Number 15, The Walking Dead Season 11. I know we're not quite done with Season 10 yet. Season 10 will actually um, end at the beginning of 2020, but I've loved Season 10. Not quite as much as Season 9, but I've loved it. And The Walking Dead, for, for all the people who jumped off board during the um, All Out War... This is a great time to get back on board because the Whispers are great villains, creepy, and Negan is on this redemption arc that I'm just digging. So, number 15 is The Walking Dead Season 11. Number 14, The Twilight Zone Season 2. That's right, a lot of people forget that The Twilight Zone came out this year, early in 2019, and it was great. It was so much fun, it was so, it was so um, um, relevant and creepy and just so well done 
I can't wait for season two of the Twilight Zone to come out. I, I know they haven't even announced the release date yet, but it's got to come out this year, right? I would think so. So Twilight Zone season two is number 14 for me. Number 13 is the Netflix original series, Masters of the Universe, the sequel series to the original show. When they announced this and that Kevin Smith was um, show running it, oh, I got so excited. I was like a geek in in a vintage toy store <laughs> thinking about the fact that we we're going to get a new Masters of the Universe series on Netflix, not tied to the current She-Ra stuff but a direct sequel to the original show. How great is that? How come they haven't thought of that yet? I love it. Masters of the Universe is number 13. Number 12, Doom Patrol Season 2. Everybody knows I love Doom Patrol. I think most people who watch Doom Patrol loved it, and I can't wait to see Season 2. It was so, so good. It was... um, Deconstructed, deconstructed the superhero genre in a way that we haven't really seen yet. And it was just so much fun to watch. Mr. Nobody was a great villain. Yeah, it stumbled on its ending. The finale wasn't very good. But that doesn't change the fact that the whole whole series leading up to the finale was phenomenal. So number 12 is Doom Patrol Season 2. Number 11 is the Netflix series Space Force with Steve Carell. Sounds like it's going to be an office-type mockumentary about the people who are tasked with starting Donald Trump's Space Force military program. It sounds like it's got all the makings to be completely hilarious. Put your politics aside, whether you're for Donald Trump, whether you're against Donald Trump, whether you're for the Space Force, against Space Force, put it aside and just understand that this is going to be a satire about the concept of the Space Force and the concept of government work. And it, it just sounds hilarious. And with Steve Carell involved, I'm there. I'm there. So 11 is Space Force. Here we are in the top 10. Number 10, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. My son is even a bigger Jurassic Park fan. And this sounds interesting to me. The idea of these kids who are stranded on Jurassic World after the events of the first one, trying to survive, trying to stay, trying to get rescued. I think it sounds great. I think it sounds scary. I think I know it's animated, but I think it sounds scary, tense, great, has the ability to be funny. I hope it doesn't go the route of Fast and Furious, the series, which I don't like so much. And I hope they try to keep it more in the vein of the Jurassic World movies. Fun, funny, but tense. So number 10 is Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Number 9 is Titans Season 3. Love season one. Season two wasn't quite as good, but it was still pretty darn good. Only reason I put this above Doom Doom Patrol is my attachment to the Titans characters. I love the Titans characters, and they've been getting such a good treatment with the Titans shows, uh, season one and season two. I can't wait to see them further develop into season three. So that is number nine. Number eight is the CBS All Access original series, The Stand. The Stand is one of my all-time favorite books written by Stephen King. And and the TV show with Gary Sinise and Molly Ringwald, it, it was my it's still to this day my favorite Stephen King adaptation. Say what you will about the new it and the it from the 90s. This is the best Stephen King adaptation. The original The Stand with Gary Sinise, Molly Ringwald, loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So, CBS Access has their hands full with this one. But I'm very optimistic because this is a this is a property that's very near and dear to my heart. The Stand is number eight. Number seven is Stranger Things Part Four. I love Stranger Things Three. I thought it was better than season two. That's just a testament to how strong the TV looks next year because Stranger Things Four is number seven. I'm not sure where they're going to go with it next uh, in season four. I think they're definitely going to have to go out of um, out of the town that that, that it's been set in. Um, I have a suspicion that's going to be set at Christmas time. Just a suspicion, but number seven. Stranger Things 4. Number 6 is one of the big ones. Survivor Winners at War, Season 40. Ah, I can't wait for it, can't wait for it, can't wait for it. It's going to be so great to see some of these winners back, including people like Ethan, um, Rob, uh, Tony, Sandra... Uh, This is going to be such a strong season of Survivor because these... these, uh, um, contestants are so dynamic and so much fun to watch and they play so hard season 40 winners at war is going to be a winner wait and see number six number five number five is the mandalorian season two how great was season one of the mandalorian there really wasn't 
any low point of this season. Granted, it was only eight episodes, but the worst episode, episode five, was still good. <laughs> I mean, The Mandalorian was such a strong season, and the way it ended with, um, I'm not going to go into any, any spoilers here, but the way it ended sets up a fun, dynamic, action-packed season two, and I can't wait. John Favreau has already teased it. Looks like we're going to be getting some huts. That's going to be great. So number five is The Mandalorian season two. Number four. Number four is The Boys season two. How great was The Boys season one? It's one of my favorite uh, seasons of TV this year. I loved The Boys. It, it, it deconstructed superheroes in a way that not even Doom Patrol did. Like, what if they were real? And what if they had these powers? And what if they could be bought? I mean, it was such a powerful concept. And I adored it. I adored I adored the Homelander character. He became so complex as the season went on. I ah, can't wait for season season two. Number three, my third most anticipated season of TV this year is Cobra Kai Season 3. It's no secret how big of a fan I am of Season 1 and Season 2 of Cobra Kai. I think they are phenomenal. I think they're some of the best stuff on TV right now. They are textbook examples of how to treat characters. Um, how to treat characters and how to revere characters, but how to tell a new story in the same process. Clearly, clearly, the pe the people who are making the Cobra Kai series, they love the Karate Kid. They love it. And they are telling the story in such a way that they are being reverent to these characters and treating them very well and very respectfully. But they also know that this is 30 years later. These characters are going to be in different places in their lives. So they have them in different places in their lives while still being respectful to the characters. And, and the growth that Johnny and Daniel have both gone through in just two seasons has been exponential. They've dove into these characters in ways that the movies never could. So I love Cobra Kai Season 1 and 2. Can't wait for Season 3. That's my number 3. My number 2 is Star Trek Picard. And that's coming up in just a couple weeks. Guys, Star Trek Picard is a sequel to The Next Generation. And The Next Generation was my Star Trek. It's a Star Trek that I grew up watching. I've told this story before. Me and my mom, we would watch it every night on its first run when it came out. I adore The Next Generation. As much as I love the original series, The Next Generation is my Star Trek. Picard is my captain. And I can't wait to see his adventures continue in Star Trek Picard. So that's number two. Number one, probably not going to be a surprise. Going to probably be a number one on a lot of people's list. And that's Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Disney Plus series. And this whole concept of creating a cinematic universe but having tv shows incorporated into it it's daring it's risky but it's also fascinating and i can't wait to see how it plays out guys the netflix shows are not a part of the mcu i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry for those who love it they're not and for all intents and purposes shield isn't yeah some of the characters from the movies crossed over to the tv show but nothing that happened in the tv show had any impact whatsoever on the larger cinematic universe it was all very self-contained and very isolated and on its own so i stand firm that the netflix series have are not connected in any way whatsoever like they are not in the same universe shields while it might be in the same universe it still has very little connection you've got some series now that's going to be coming out on Disney Plus that are going to be essential viewing if you're a fan of the MCU. And that's fascinating and that's exciting to me and I can't wait. They're starting it off with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a couple characters that are right at the heart of what's happening in the MCU. So I can't wait to see how this develops. So that's my number one, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What are your guys' top shows that you're looking forward to in 2020? I'd love to hear them. Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much, guys, for being here at the LQ Review, where we get to talk about all of the geeky, nerdy stuff we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you later.